Hi everyone and welcome back to our Saving Christmas series. In this series we've gone over how to create the Saving Christmas game I released in the run up to Christmas. If you want to follow along, all the assets you can find in the link down below in the description. In this episode we're going to go over adding the music and sound effects to our game, uh, adding some life to it. But before we do that, we're going to fix a couple of uh, things I wanted to do uh, that I forgot to do last time. So on our snowman boss battle, in a level blueprint, I copied these three for each of the presents. Now notice I accidentally left it as present, present, present. These should be the other two. Okay, so you can remove those. And you want to click on present two. Like so. Go back to that level blueprint and add it here as a reference. And that'll go into both there and there. Just replacing it with the new one. And we'll do the same for present three. Plugging it into your targets. There and there. Okay, so now it will generate all three of the presents. Uh, okay. So now we're going to work on sound and music. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some music. So my boss battle here, I've got some themes that I've imported in. I've got the Frosty theme. And that's what I'm going to play for Frosty here. Now, in my setup for this, I have changed some of the timings on Frosty to match the sound. So I changed his spawn, which is up here somewhere. Du, 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 du. Yes, the delay between begin play and the spawning is now seven seconds. And I worked out that's a good time to have it line up with the music. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So on back of my boss level blueprint, so level blueprint, on begin play, we're going to do play sound at 2D. And 2D just means it's going to play uh, through your headphones no matter where you are in the world. Headphones, speakers, whatever you're doing. And then we'll choose a sound. I'm going to choose a frosty thing. Hit compile. And we're done there. So now when I push play on this level, the music should play. And it should time perfectly with frosty's spawn. There you go. So there we have the Frosty's uh, boss battle music playing. Next, we're going to work on the sound effects going on in the world. Next, we're going to be adding some sound effects. So we're going to add sound effects to Frosty whilst we're here in this world. So we can go into Frosty here, edit Frosty. And I've made some sound effects. We will see if they're any good or not. Um, so on the spawn here, I'm going to take it to play a sound effect on the spawn. So play sound at location. And the sound is going to be Frosty spawn. And at location, it's going to be get actor location. And this is the uh, not like the other one, this uh, other play sound. This play sound means it plays at a certain location, so it's louder the closer your camera is to it. So we'll see how that works in a second. We may have to tweak some numbers, but let's see this in action. Whoa. So now we've got a spawning sound effect. Uh, next, we're going to work on his attack the uh, attack noise. So we're going to find phase two, which is his attack phase here. And at the start of this, we're going to uh, do, 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 play his attack sound sound effect. So we're going to do this after the delay here. So literally just before he play animation for the attack, we're going to do play sound. Uh, actually, what might be better is if you put it onto the actual animation itself. Uh, so if I find the animation, uh, actors, characters, firstly, and find his attack animation. And in here, you can assign sound effects to their attacks. 
So if I find where I want to start the attack, which is here, I'm going to go right click, add notify, play sound. Click on this play sound notifier and you can choose what sound you want to play. In this case, I'm going to choose Frosty Attack. Now let's see if this lines up correctly. Maybe we'll tweak it a bit. Okay, so there's the sound effect. But let's push play on here. Okay, so it needs to be a bit different there. Let's put it right at the start. slightly out but it'll do it save and close that that way the animation will play that sound effect when we want it to okay next we're going to do his death so whilst we're here load up the death animation and we want to go to the start of this right click add notify play sound click on the notify and choose the frosty death sound effect No. Uh, 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 time. Let's uh, replay that. No. Uh, okay, so it's got a bit into space at the start. Uh, I'll quickly fix that in Audacity. Be right back. Okay, I'm back and I fixed the sound effect. You won't have to do that because you've got no. no Okay, now push play. No. No. This is death. Okay, so other things we've got to do are sound effects for the giant snowballs and sound effects for the spikes. So uh, and the little snowballs too. So I'm going to go do the giant snowballs first and open them up. And what we're going to do here is we'll do uh on hit i don't know if that'll trigger the landing i wonder if it will let's have a look so if i drag that out and do play sound actually we'll do that on the false here play sound at location sound is going to be the snowball thud sfx the location is get actor location. Hit compile. Let's see if that works. So we listen out for the giant snowballs hitting the ground. Whoa. Okay, so the sound effects aren't playing. That means the hit effect isn't what I wanted. Okay. So uh, okay, so the reason why it didn't work is because we had not set on a static mesh to simulation generates hit event. That way the physics will generate the hit event as well. Now on here false, when we play the sound at location, we want to do a do once on here. So do once. And that way it will only play the sound once when it hits the ground and then we won't get load of repetition otherwise it will sound very messy. So now if I play it, I'll take a look what we got. Whoa. Okay. So there's those sound effects. Next we're gonna do the icicle. So open up the icicle and in here we're going to do on the event for on system finished. And what we do here is take the play the sound effect before we do the article spawn. So play sound at location. And the sound effect we want is the uh, ice spike sound effects. And location again is get actor location. Okay. Okay, so let's test that out. Now to test that out, I'm going to tell Frosty to start in phase uh, phase three. So let's do the begin play here and take that over to here. Okay, 
just tell it to start doing phase three. Those sound effects now it's a bit loud, so I'm actually going to change the audio of that. So I'm going to go to volume multiplier here in the advanced options and I set this to 0.5. Now let's see how that sounds any better. It's still a bit too loud, I think. Let's turn it down even more. Let's go 0.2. Compile and play. That's better. So that's the article done. Next, we're going to do the snowballs. So go to your snowball and we're, we're going to do a destroyed event. Event destroyed. And we're going to tell this to play a sound. At location and that sound is going to be a snowball SFX again get act to location so now when I throw a snowball and it hits something um, we will have a sound hit now I'm also going to make it so when it's thrown by the player we do a sound effect too so I'm going to close that and uh, go into my player character center and find where you throw a uh, snowball. So I've got attack here. So I'll notify begin. Uh, we'll do, I'll notify begin, play sound uh, at location. Just gonna drag that out a bit. And the sound is going to be throw. And the location is get actor location. Okay, so that's that done. Now to test out for this snowball effect, we're going to go into Frosty and switch the begin play to his phase two. Hit play. <gasps> now you can hit this, hear the snowballs hitting the floor. Now the sound effect for the throw is very very subtle and we get this very loud level. There you have it. Okay. And I think that's pretty much all the sound effects we have for this uh, level. So I'm just going to switch Frosty back to begin play on his normal begin play route. Over here. And click compile. Okay, so now at the other levels. So let's go into the other levels. Let's go to level one. Hit save. <clears throat> okay, now level one, got a few things different. We've got goblins right about, and we've got the candy canes, as well as the general music for the level. So we're gonna go into the level blueprint, and on begin play, find the route for begin play. And it's here, we do it right at the start, probably. We turn it to play sound at 2D. And the sound effect is going to be the music we want for this level. So I'm going to go for fretless, uh, fretless theme. Oh no, let's go for sports. I think I know what that one sounds like. Uh, let's have a look, listen. Bad. Like this. And you got jingle bells as well. So it's between uh, fretless and frost waltz. Obviously, you can choose whatever the hell you like, but I think I'm gonna do frost waltz. So back to my little blueprint, and I'll use frost waltz theme. Okay, so I want this sound to actually play 
and then change when the chimney spawns to indicate the player that can end the level. So as you notice, this play sound doesn't have any return value. So what we need to do is swap out the play sound here for something a bit more complex. Well, I say complex, it's not too different. We're going to just do a uh, type in sound and you want to use spawn sound 2D. And this will output this audio component. So you can choose the sound you want. So I'm going to choose fretless theme. And we want to store this return value as a variable. So I'm going to click out of here and promote to variable and call it uh, music. Okay. With that done, we can go over to the chimney and get that music and take the stop and then we can do play sound 2D and choose the jingle bells. Now to test this out properly, I'm not going to go through the whole entire level, I'll just copy this, put it at the start and we'll drag this out and put a delay in for about five seconds. Drag that in and we can have that up like so. So that's going to play the one song for five seconds, stop it and then play another one. There you go. Okay. So that's the music for the level done. Next we're going to do is the candy canes. So quite simply go find your candy cane actor. And when it's collected here, we're going to do play sound at location and choose candy cane pickup and get actor location. Okay. Next, we've got the goblins. So go find your goblin. Okay, so the goblin's got a variety of sound effects. The first one's when he starts chasing you. So find a task that has called chase player. Open this up. And at the start of this, or anywhere you like, do here, for example, we can drag out here and do play sound at location. The sound effect is going to be goblin chase. And the location is going to come from this pawn here. We can just use this as goblin, in fact. So let's just drag that out get location and plug that in like so so that's that one the next we're going to do is when he gets hit so find your goblin actor and look for not the way you knock him out which is in here at the end of here we'll do play sound at location choose goblin hit again setting location to get actor location Next we have him giving up. So when he gives up chasing you and turns back. Okay. So I'm going to go to the behavior tree for this. And when we're doing that, back here, we're going to tell him to move back to his location. So on the return here, we're going to open it up. And on return, we're going to play sound at location. Choose goblin give up and the sound effect is going to come from the controlled pawn get to location and plug that in so let's test that out with our goblin inside the game okay so obviously he's uh he's going nuts there so we only want to play the sound once okay um so let's go into our chase player here and what we want to do rather than do it here probably we want it when he sees the player so that would actually be on the goblin ai maybe senses player okay so senses player is true there okay so we can do the play sound here. So I'm going to drag that out. I'll cut that out rather. 
put that on the Goblin AI. Like so. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell this to do once. Now you see there has a reset button, okay? Now the reset button can be set back on the, um, when he returns. So on this reset, I'm going to add a custom event. Let me go reset. Oh. Hit compile. Uh, the target actor, by the way, is, for this is going to be get controlled pawn. Compile. And then we need to call that reset in our uh, return uh, function. So find a return function. And in here, we're going to do the reset. Now to do that, we need to get our controlled pawn and and uh, cast him to goblin. And as goblin, reset. Uh, why is that not showing? Oh, I need goblin AI, sorry. I need controller, cast to Goblin AI reset compile and we're done there. So let's now test that out. See if we've got weird bugs. <laughs> Okay, so we're pretty much done here. We're just going to swap out the sound effect for the music so it doesn't do the switching stuff. Delete that and that and move this back over here. Like so. Okay, I think that's all the sound effects. Let's double check that I've used all the ones I've imported in. So I've got sound effects. So we've got candy canes, footsteps. I've got the footsteps. Uh, Frosty, done, done, done. Goblin, done, done, done. Uh, hit, got to do hit for Santa. So we've got San Santa sound effects to do and the present sound effects to do. Okay, cool. So let's start work on those. Let's do Santa first of all, because that's an easy one to do. Find Santa and we're going to find his animation for his walking. So we've got running, let's do running first. And what you want to do in here is look for where his feet hit the ground. So we've got one here. So I'm going to right click, add notify, play sound. And we're going to choose foot step. And where each foot hits the ground, like so. I'm going to add another one, play sound, click on it, and then change that one to foot step. And keep going until you do the full thing. Play sound, foot step. And last one is there. A sound. Foot step. Okay. So let's test that out. Okay, it's not too bad. We've got a slight uh, bit that's a bit too uh, quick. I think it's at the end. Yeah, it's a bit too quick at the end. Okay. So we've got there, there, the yeah, timing looks a bit odd there doesn't it, like the gap between this seems a lot larger than the gap between there and there, the animation doesn't seem slow though. But it's accurate to the animation. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Hit save and close that. Next we're going to do is when he gets hit. So what we can do here is go to our Santa actor. Look for where he gets hit, uh, which should be received damage. Okay, 
and in here we do play uh, play sound at location Santa oh, not Santa it could just called hit I think hit hit and the location is get actor location hit compile let's test that out Okay, so the next bit is the present. So we're gonna find another character and that's the present. Again, look at his animations for his walk. And we're gonna just time his walk with that sound effect. So, and flop. We're gonna go right, uh, right click on the notifier, and notify, play sound, click on it. And we're gonna choose present drop. Let's see how that looks. Excellent. Hit save. By the way, you can tweak the volume and pitch um, on each of these if you wished. So I'm going to go there. And next, we're going to do is when he's collected. So on the present actor here, I'm going to find where he's collected, which is all over here. After the destroy actor, actually, let's do it just before we destroy actor. We'll do play sound at location. And we'll do present. Pick up and get actor location. Hit compile and close that. So let's test this out. Catch that present that's over there. So you can hear it, it's way too loud. It should go to here unless I'm on the screen. So I need to fix that. That sounds great. Uh, I know what that sound is. That's these ones down here. Okay. So we need to tell it not to play the sound unless we are in range. So play sound at location. And um, we'll turn it down. Attenuation settings. Um, I wonder if we can just do it on the actual sound. Let's have a look. Uh, present drop and we're looking for attenuation attenuation and uh, we need to make a new sound attenuation so we go sound effects attenuation hit save and we're going to open it up okay so the sound function is linear which is what we want it's it's spherical yep in a radius yep pull off yep and um, let's just see how that looks in the game if we drag that in. So this present drop has attenuation attached to it. So if I drag it into the world, you should see the attenuation around it. Okay. So let's see if that is working. So I can't hear the present anymore. This one. So all we've got left to do is go to level 2 and add exactly the same sound uh, settings for the music over there. So let's just go to our blueprint here, open up a blueprint, and I'm just going to do uh, take a look at this. So I need to do a spawn sound set and then on a chimney to hit the stop and play. So let's load up the map 2. Click save. And go to the blueprint here, open a little blueprint. Find begin play, and we're going to do uh, sound, uh, spawn sound 2D, and we're going to do the uh, frost waltz, 
Okay. And promote that one to variable. Music. And then on the chimney, spawn chimney, drag music out, set to stop. And then we're going to tell it to play sound 2D. So we just hit to play the jingle bells thing. And there we go. Let me double check this. The sound effects, all the sound effects should still work. <laughs> done all the sound effects and music for our game so all that's left is to uh, add the menus and obviously make the characters make make it so the character can actually die and lose at the game and then we're done thanks very much for watching if you want to see those last few parts right now you can head over patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where a donation of just one dollar will get access to all that content plus much much more big thank you to all my supporters so far we wouldn't be doing this without you guys so thank you very much and merry christmas see you next time bye bye